Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. So what I have for you today is an exercise from my Groove Perspectives book. And the exercise revolves around what I call Group B paradiddles. Now, before I go into explaining what the Group B paradiddles are, this exercise is really designed to help you improve your rim shot consistency and also um, help you improve your dynamic range on the snare drum. Remember, this whole thing's about be being able to play ghost strokes at a fairly low level and also you know playing with dynamics in general so this is an exercise that's going to help that so what are group b paradiddles firstly i need to say that this is just a name that i've created for them to differentiate from group a paradiddles so <laughs> So the group A paradiddles are our four paradiddles. So basically a single paradiddle and then the three inversions, the reverse, the inward and the outward. So group B paradiddles are the same four paradiddles, single paradiddle, reverse paradiddle, inward paradiddle and outward paradiddle. So how do they differ? Well, what I've done with the group B paradiddles is I've put the accent on the downbeat. So for example, if I play a reverse paradiddle, group A, the sticking is right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. On the bottom of your screen here, I'm gonna have the stickings in lowercase and the accents in uppercase. So anyway, the reverse paradiddle, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, would normally have an accent that displaces along with the sticking. So in this case, I'll just play that on the snare drum. So what you will notice is the accent is played on the and of each beat. So have a listen to this. One, two, one, two. So the group B version of the inward paradiddle, the accent would be on the downbeat. So it gets a little bit tricky here technically because we're playing an accent with one hand and then immediately followed by a non-accent with the same hand because we've got a double at the start of the paradiddle. So the group B reverse paradiddle will sound like this. One, two, one, two. So in order to play that version of the reverse paradiddle, the group B version, we need to play the accent using the downstroke technique. So just basically not allowing the stick to rebound off the surface so that we can keep that following stroke with the same hand at a much lower height. I've done a video on this topic of downstrokes, upstrokes, etc. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So the same thing would apply to a Inward paradiddle, for example. This is a little easier to play because the accent does occur on a single stroke. So normally the inward paradiddle would have an accent on the fourth, 16th note of every beat like this. One, two, three, four. But in this case, the group B paradiddle has the accent on the downbeat. One, two, one, two. So that one's a little easier to play than the group B reverse paradiddle. And then finally is the group B outward paradiddle, which is also a, a little complicated technically because in this case we're actually accenting the second note of a double. So what I'll do is I'll play you the group A outward paradiddle. The accent would normally be on the second sixteenth note of every beat. One, two, one, two. As with the group B paradiddles, the outward paradiddle would have the accent on the downbeat, which is just a little bit difficult technically. So this is probably one you need to spend a bit more time with. One, two, one, two. Then of course, the single paradiddle already has the accents on the downbeat.
So all of these paradiddles sound the same when we play them on one surface, in this case, the snare drum. So in this case, I'm playing all the accents as rim shots and then the non-accented notes, I'm you know aiming for a height of about four to five centimeters or you know roughly a couple of inches. So this is the exercise part of it. So what I'm gonna do is play two bars of single paradiddle, two bars of reverse paradiddle, two bars of inward paradiddle and two bars of outward paradiddle in four four. And what I'm aiming for is to make all of these paradiddles sound identical so that it's practically impossible to identify which paradiddle you're actually playing. So let me do this exercise for you. Hopefully I'll be able to practice what I preach here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That really is a challenge. So here's a great practice tip for you. So what I suggest you do is play this for about two or three minutes and loop that entire exercise so it just becomes a continuous exercise for that period of time and record yourself. Then when it comes to listening back to the recording you've made, listen back to it somewhere in the middle. Don't scroll back to the beginning but just scroll somewhere in the middle randomly and see if you can identify which paradiddle you're actually playing. Now, if you can't identify which paradiddle you're playing, then you've done a great job in keeping all of these even. If you can identify which paradiddle you're playing, then you've just got a little bit more work to do on the evenness of it. So I would suggest that you just focus on evenness of your non-accented strokes, making sure that those ghost strokes are even, between the right hand and the left hand. And then the same for the accents, making sure that your accents on the right hand are the same volume as the accents on the left hand, and making sure that those accent volumes don't change according to which paradiddle you're actually playing. So it really just needs to sound like, let's say, a single paradiddle all the way through. So that's the challenge. Um, this is a, a great way of warming up at the drum set if you're gonna practice grooves or practice playing stuff with dynamics around the drum set. And it's a really great hand conditioning exercise too. Really great for your rim shots, great for your go strokes. Anyway. I hope this is something that you can use uh, in your playing and in your practice regime. And um, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. And remember to hit that notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a video, which is every week. So until next week, have a great week and uh, I'll see you all soon. Bye.